When I was little and scared of creaky floorboards and spooky noises, I would sing. Yes, I would be singing to myself, but in my mind I wasn't alone. My frightened imagination would conjure up evils that lurked in the corners of those dark and dingy basements. I'd sing with the belief that anyone spying on me through their beady, greedy eyes would stop and listen. So in love they would be with my song that they'd crawl back into their cardboard caves and settle back on the other side of the peeping holes and I would be safe. Maybe it's naive of me. Maybe it's the magic side of a trick that fools me into believing that the wicked witches were just tired of being called wicked, that their crackling voices came from their shouts of protest be something other than evil. Maybe their eyes had grown bloodshot and worn from searching for something among the monotonous fuzzy TV popcorn of their shame, their teeth cracked and rotted from being made to chew and swallow the words of their abusers. But my voice housed hammers and nails to fix their broken hearts and broken promises, a bit of color in the beige recesses of their broken down car minds, a bit of beauty to soothe the beast. Children always seem to find the most beautifully simple truths. Splitting atoms of grey into oblivion until there is only the black and the white and some kind of youthful understanding of the word atom. Like it's just a Lego block of possibilities, anything. And as we age, we can no longer fathom it. It's not a Lego block. It's only a piece of one, Frankenstein with all the grey that we thought we had gotten rid of when we were young, until truths are nothing more than mixed together pieces of something we used to know and something that has come back for vengeance. Vengeance had no place in a child's mind. But this truth screams at me. Maybe their innocence lies trapped in battle scar tissue, and there's always someone who'll chime, can't do the time, don't do the crime, but they're the same people who cry sticks and stones while they pick up bones, so I'll still sing. If not for my sake, then for theirs, because I've realized it's not a greedy eye, but a needy eye that watches me from the dark, and that all their melodies sound like funeral marches, so I'll sing. It's not much but a crocus in the seeming depths of winter is always just enough.